All right, good morning. Today is day 12, and I wanted to continue on with this back of the envelope calculations. The reason being is I saw a couple of uh, comments come back with calculations, and I think the maybe the frame that I had set, which was you can do the, the math in kind of five minutes, that may have misled people into trying to figure out like a quick hack on how to do this. I mean, I've taken a picture, and this will be below, uh, this video, but really, even though it takes five minutes, you still need to run through the process. And what happens is if you start to try to shortcut things, you're going to miss important elements of this back of the envelope. So, uh, before I even get into that, I was listening to a podcast from Alex Mendozian the other day, and he was talking about Buddha and the concept of, um, uh, eightfold, the eightfold path, and and it's and it's essentially like a framework that Buddha used to explain the journey to enlightenment, and the eight steps, if you will, are right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. So, I've put in how each one of those can be applied to commercial real estate and I think you'll realize that <clears throat> you really like right now what I'm trying to give you are call it the the first four right the right understanding then the right thought then how to talk about it how to communicate it so that you you sound like someone that understands commercial real estate and then how to take the right action now in terms of livelihood that is going to take place when you go out after this training, when you're when you're just in your day-to-day -day operations. Right effort, I suppose when we're doing these back of the envelope calculations or when you're um, doing due diligence or looking for properties, like understanding how much effort goes into it. It's why I'm really big on explaining to people you don't need to do like multiple commercial real estate deals to have a very, um, like, like to earn very good money. And the reason for that is the deals are so big. Um, however, that doesn't mean that it doesn't take a lot of effort still, right? You're still maybe gonna look at 50 deals. Like right now, I've got a couple of commercial properties under contract and I put a lot of time and energy. I mean, I drove uh, eight hours yesterday, uh, well, no, two days ago, today's Friday, uh, just to go look at one property. Right, so so a full day. Now that was just just specific driving. I toured the property for an hour. I toured the surrounding area for an hour, and so it was twelve hours. It maybe cost me a couple hundred dollars just in in gas. Not not, not um, like no consideration to my time. Just like hard cost to go look at that one property. I mean, I've flown. Like if this deal goes together, I will fly out to Toronto to meet with one person for probably thirty minutes and I may still not do the deal. However, um, that is like the right amount of effort, the right amount of like mindfulness, it's, it's my livelihood. And so I'm trying to kind of um, give you proper expectations. And so what I've done is I'm showing you the exact way that I would do a back of the envelope. Now, I can do this a lot quicker because I can skip maybe a few of the steps because I know I can just, I can almost kind of do the math really quick in my head. And you can see none of the math here is difficult. Uh, all of this is very basic. It's just understanding the right sequence, right? Step one, what is the, what, like, so I'm, if I'm gonna calculate the net operating income on a property, it's gotta be, what's my revenue? What's my expenses? And then what am I left with, which is my NOI? Once I have my NOI, I just take that, divide it by the cap rate, and I get the value. Then I take the value and I times it by 0.7 and I get the mortgage. So I'm just going sequentially down. Once my once I get my mortgage, what's my principal and interest? Okay, well I'm just going to plug it into a calculator and then I'm going to calculate what my P&I is going to be. P&I is principal and interest. So now I've got my principal and interest. I have my net operating income. The money left over is my cash flow, right? And the reason I'm going through this fast is because that that's just how like I can do it quicker in my head, but I'm trying to articulate it. So once I have all that then I'm able to say, okay, what's my cash on cash and what's my cash on cash with equity pay down? Now, if I wanna figure out what's the actual return I'm going to get, I threw in something extra. I said, well, it's gonna cost me $25 a square foot to lease up the 2,000 square feet. So you get to factor that in. 
but that doesn't hit your net operating income because it's a one-time expense. It's a capital expense to put in a tenant. So I plug that in later on in the deal where it's a little bit lower on this. It's probably going to be backwards, but it's down here. And I talked about where it's uh, the equity in the deal initially was seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. If you remember, I pay, the value was two and a half million. I was able to borrow seventy percent of that, which was one point seven five million. Okay, so I've got seven fifty into the deal. Plus, I'm going to have to put in another fifty thousand to lease up this vacant space. So in total, I've got eight hundred. But I'm able to refinance the property because I've increased the value from two and a half to eight point or uh, three point three million. So I've got. Uh, an additional $833,000. So I just start to um, subtract out. So my refinance amount was 583,000. I go 800 minus 533. I'm left with $217,000 in the deal. Now I base my cash on cash on that, right? 52,000 a year, right? My NOI minus my P&I. So 200 minus 148 is 52. 52 divided by 217 is in this case, just about 24%. Now I add in my principal and interest. In this case, it's about $55,000 in year one, how much the mortgage is gonna get paid down. So in total, if I was to add up the cash I'm getting plus the principal pay down in year one, I'm just about uh, at 50%, it's 49.54%. So this, the, the reason I, I wanna give you this example is number one, it was a real, uh, like I've changed some of the numbers and the square footage and stuff, but this is like a real deal that I've worked on with clients. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, I want to show you what's possible when all you do is you fill a little bit of vacancy and you eliminate the slippage. The slippage is the op costs that are uh, that you're having to pay out on vacant space, right? So in this case, it was 2,000 square feet times $10 a square foot. So you're losing $20,000 of net operating income. You have to pay that as a landlord. So while commercial real estate on the upside when you fill vacancy is incredible on the downside when you lose space you can see how it impacts your bottom line right and so i don't want to show you just one side of the equation without you understanding like both sides of the both sides right so um anyways try to go through this homework again uh and and if you want print this out because I'll, I'll take a picture and i'll, I'll upload it and then uh, run through it and some of this you're going to see like what's ltv well that's loan to value uh, DCR, I did a DCR calculation just to give you a little bit extra, like it, it's kind of called it a bonus, but your DCR is your debt coverage ratio. So this is, um, this is like commercial real estate 101, right? The, like none of this is complicated. There are more assumptions that would go into a deal like this, like how long is it gonna take? What's my downtime? Uh, I don't have a structural allowance in here. But you know what? When you start getting into the minutia without understanding like the, like, like this is 95%. Right, you the, the the other five percent is just refining and tweaking, uh, but if you don't understand the ninety five percent, then getting into the weeds uh, is a waste of time. So hopefully that helps. Uh, like I said, I'll upload this, do the homework, have a great weekend. I'll see you next Monday.